welcome to The Decision Makers, the show where we dig into what it takes to run a town. <laughs> oh, we are here this week with Councillor Marika Kosinchuk. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So um, as we do, each time we have someone new in here, we mm -hmm. start at the very beginning. And don't make me sing that. <laughs> so I get it in my head every time I say that. No, I really want to hear you sing. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I... I I, I know you, so I know the answer to this question, but um, where do you come from? Where did you grow up? What is your background? I actually grew up in Nipua. Um, okay. We moved here, my family moved here when I was in grade five. Um, now you're going to know how old I am because that was 42 years <laughs> okay. ago. And I lived here, uh, I graduated high school at NACI, huh. went off to university in Brandon, and then I moved back and worked at Eastview Lodge, actually. Okay. And then um, I worked at Eastview for five years, and then I changed careers and took massage therapy and reflexology and opened my own business and mm -hmm. got married to uh, Curtis Kostinchuk, who is also <laughs> works in Nipua here at Ann's Brothers, and had two children, and they both graduated high school here <laughs> in Nipua. So I've been here a long time. Had a business here now for 26 okay. years, almost 27. And still going. And still going, yep. still busy, yep. Mm -hmm. So what did you do when you were at Eastview? Like what career did you transition from? I was a, a healthcare aide, psychiatric uh, healthcare okay. aide. So I was hired on the Alzheimer's ward full time when I oh, finished wow. school. Oh wow, so that, it's kind of, I, that can probably be yeah. intense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was all, I loved my job there yeah. too. But I kind of had a, I always wanted to do massage therapy and reflexology yeah. and that kind of therapy stuff. and. I loved it, and one day I just came home and said, I think I'm going to quit my job and open my own business. And I did. And you did. And it's Successfully. Been, yeah, it's been fantastic. And I wanted to raise children in a small town, okay. and I've always really, Nipah's home, so. So that's why you wanted to come back to Nipah after university? You yeah. just wanted that small town experience? I wanted a small town experience, You yeah. had a positive experience here growing up, I guess? I did, yeah. I had yeah. a great childhood in Nipah, yeah. yeah. And a lot has changed, but a lot has stayed the same, so. That's true. You know, it's kind of nice. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. after that history in Nipua, this is the big question. Uh, what made you want to run for council? It's a, that's a tough one, actually. <laughs> a little bit of a tough one. Um, I am not a political person. I don't follow a lot of politics. I do more so now that I'm in it. Yeah. Um, so I can understand a little bit of it. But uh, because of my business, and I see a lot of people, uh, yeah. a lot of people and I was asked several times to run yeah. I had a lot of people say to me Marike I would re really like to see you run for council because I see yeah. a lot of people I hear a lot of their opinions yeah. their ideas their questions their concerns and one day I just thought maybe I should you know yeah. I've I grew up here um, the kids grew up here it's my home, I have a business, and I just thought it's my way of giving back to the yeah. community, you know, that really gave a lot to our family. So I decided, okay, I'll throw my name in the, in the hat and see what happens. <laughs> and this is what happens. And this is what happened. Here, three years mm -hmm. later. Yeah, yeah. And it's been, it's been very interesting. It's um, not what I expected it to be. In what way? It's, it takes an immense amount of work to run a town, like yeah. huge. And I mean, as a resident, right? I, I lived here for how many years before I ran for council? Had a business, yeah. did everything, and just expected everything to happen and not really ever question it, except for when you would say things like, wow, I can't believe they're not fixing this. And I, you know, they got this money, but it didn't go to this. We yeah. need the streets fixed or we need the, right? And I yeah. was one of those residents. I did that until I was in it. And you realize the process to get to all of that yeah. is way more than you think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you have people coming to you now who, oh. the same people who, who came to you and told you to run, are they coming to you with their issues now saying, yes. bring this to council? Yes. And are you able to do that on the level that uh, they were maybe hoping? Um, not always. Yeah. Uh, and that is one of the, that's one of the hurdles, right? Yeah. Is I do hear a lot of questions and a lot of concerns. And I want to be a person that the community can come to and approach and say, you know, I'm having issues with this or I would like to see this done. I, I appreciate that. I have no problem with that. 
I take it to council. I take their issues. I, I take yeah. their concerns. But we have to deal with things as council as a whole, which yeah. is what we do. And it's not always the, re the reply or the response that they're looking for. Because mm. sometimes we can't fix what they want or yeah. it's out of our hands or it's something that's it's going to take time. Lots of things take time to fix or, yeah. you know, invest in. And it, it's so that's a bit frustrating, yeah. but I certainly try. Yeah. yeah. So what, what actually is the process then if someone comes to you um, with with something, you know, maybe some concern on their sidewalk on their street or something mm -hmm. like that? Um, is there is there like a formal process, paperwork, or do you just come to council and say, you know, I've mm -hmm. had this brought to me. Does he have to get on the agenda? What is the actual process? If, if it's a real concern that needs to hit an agenda that council actually has to vote or do some, it has to be in writing. Okay. Um, you know, voicing your concerns is great. I can take it to council and say, this is an issue somebody is having, their sidewalk's not great. You know, and you council will say, okay, and somebody will look into it hopefully. But if it's yeah. an issue that's not maybe being fixed right away or it's a little more, it has to be in writing. And we ask yeah. people to actually come to the council meetings, um, yeah. you know, have a delegate and sit there and talk to us, tell us what your concerns are. It is, it's really a lot better yeah. um, to approach council as a whole, but it's, you know, some but it people can be don't. intimidating. I it think, can be intimidating. People. Yeah, I'm sure it can be, but we're a really good group of people. So. <laughs> I've been there several times, so yes. I probably not, would not be so intimidated. But someone right. who's maybe never been there, yeah. um, now we do broadcast the council meetings mm -hmm. on the station so people can yes. see that, which sort of helps uh, helps them understand. But, part but of the, because so, we yeah. were all very new mm -hmm. council at the very beginning, um, of course, we all are uh, in, on committees. But yeah. we, have, we kind of right at the very beginning, we do a committee as a whole. Right. We're all on our committees, but we all meet together at council just because a lot of us are very new. Yeah. This is a new... Yeah, that was five <laughs> of seven of you on the yeah. council. So what was that like coming into that situation where you weren't just one person coming to all the old timers? It was... Uh, to be really honest, it was great start. because we were all pretty much in the same yeah. situation, right? A lot of us, it's, we're all new, haven't done this before. I've never ran for any council before. Yeah. And, um, you know, I've been on a, different clubs and stuff years and years ago <laughs> when we had Canets and Nipah and those sorts of things, but uh, yeah, so it, it, was, it was good because we were all pretty much in the same position. Yeah, and the former councillors that were still on were, mm -hmm. have been fantastic with all of us, yeah. newbies, yeah. And of course, the council, the administration oh. in the office carries on from council to council, mm -hmm. so. And they are amazing, yes. <laughs> the, the more I, I learn, I, the they more are I kind of realize that. Amazing, yeah. yes, absolutely. I say they do all the footwork for us. They really yeah. do. They're, the, the administration staff is top notch. Yeah. yeah. So what do you see your role being as a member of council? My role? Yeah. Really to represent um, the community and the taxpayers. Yeah. You know, when we uh, were elected onto council, the very first page in the book says it is your, you are elected yeah. to make the decisions that are the best for the taxpayers in your community. That's what you are here for. Yeah. It's not what maybe you might think personally. You really have to think what is best for the people yeah. that elected you. That's, that is your duty as a counselor. Yeah, and I can't imagine that is always easy. It's not always easy, no. Can you <laughs> think of uh, any, I'm not, I'm not gonna bring up one particular one, but any, any situations where it was, you found it sort of difficult to not bring your own personal perspective into a particular issue. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you can talk about. Um, yeah, we did have, yeah, there was one that it was a very large um, choice of counsel. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was a very personal one. Um, but yet I had to remove myself from the personal aspect mm -hmm. and look at what is best for the taxpayers of the community. Maybe. Right. And that, when I did that, I had, you know, it was a pretty clear decision. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. So is that, in that decision-making process, are you, when you say what is best for people, like, 
I'm just digging into like that actual decision making process here, mm-hmm. um, because your background factors into that, and, and your life factors into that, and what sort of things factor into decision for 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 anything for anything. Well, you have to look at yeah. you, you have to look at the economy. You have to look yeah. at taxpayers' right. dollars. Um, it's it's like running a, a large business. It yeah. is like that. You, if you're spending money. Um, taxpayers' money. It's not your money. It, well, it is yours if you're a tax which yeah. when I'm a taxpayer. But you have to look at long-term as well. Not what is good for us right now, what is right. good for us in five years, what is good for us in 10 years, when you may not even be on a council member. And if that changes, if they make those changes, that's fine. But you really have to look at what is, you have to protect the community, its assets, its income. Right. That's, a, that's what you need to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Plus, try and make everyone happy, which isn't not possible. I think no, in anything, in, in any, anything. Yeah. 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 So um, one of the first things you said was that you were not a political person. You had never really followed politics, not really. and you're kind of starting to now. Has how much has this changed your perspective on different levels of politics? Um, that's a tough one to answer, actually, because <laughs> I'm still really not. Yeah. I don't, I'm, I follow it more. I yeah. understand it more. Like, right. I understand the levels of government more mm-hmm. and how they work in a sense of how does it reflect on a municipality. Right. I'm still learning that, but I do understand it a little bit more. So I'm a little bit more interested in the bigger picture because I know it will affect us yeah. here. So the decisions that will yes. directly affect. Yeah. And that's a, ongoing learning. I, yeah, I'm still learning. I'm all pretty that. sure that's a never-ending process of yeah. learning on that one mm-hmm. specifically. Absolutely. Um, so, really, um, what what are your you personally? What are your duties on council? Like, I know you serve on several committees, mm-hmm. um, and every councillor has their different committees that they are on. So, right. what is your your portfolio, I guess it is. I am on the, um, I'm co-chair with Councillor um, Parrott for Public Works Committee. Okay. And I am on the Disabled Persons Association uh, Handy Van. Okay. Pretty much committee. And I'm also on the County Court Building Committee. Okay. Yes. And we are the town representative on these committees. Right. So is this something that you chose that you were interested in, in being involved in? Or do you just kind of, you do this, you do this, you do this? It was pretty much um, at the start, um, Mayor McCutcheon came to us, I think individually and said, I think you'd be good here. Are you okay with that? Sure. (laughs) I mean, we're all new, right? So you don't really, absolutely. Um, I was, I was game to do whatever they wanted me to do. All right. Well, let's, let's dig into those ones a bit then. Um, So the, the handy van, the, what does that involve? What? That one's kind of um, the one I'm, probably the most involved in really right now um it's a really i i I find the handy van is a really important thing for us to have here uh, in nipua Mm -hmm. i think all communities should have something for accessibility so uh, when i um started on council it uh i just i kind of took it under my wing as revamping it just a little bit mm-hmm. so that is in the works with revamping the contracts and the okay the policies because yeah. there really wasn't um necessarily a, a great footprint there not yeah. to fault anyone at all yeah i just think that you know covid really brought a lot of things of course, to the yeah. surface right and then obviously the handy van suffered dearly through covid because there wasn't a lot of usership so yeah. that was also an issue um, so I've been working quite a bit with that, trying yeah. to get that, and, and we're getting there. It's it's a it's process. A work in progress. It is, but it's it's really come a long way. So I guess the original policies just sort of came about maybe organically as issues arose. Those policies yeah, were and kind of, and kind yeah. of like that, like different things would you know maybe arise, and you're like, well, and for me, oh. I've learned that on council, there's there's always contracts, policies, guidelines. Yeah bylaws like and so you and those are what you follow yeah. so when I went back to see what they follow they just needed a little a little tweaking a little tweaking yeah so we've just been working and they've all been very good like the committee's very good there um, too so anyone like you or myself who kind of grew up here knows what the handy van is but who does the handy van service 
Well, the handy van actually services um, anyone who needs it. Yeah. Right? It is, so. it is a, it's an, it's, a, it's an opportunity for somebody who does not have transportation. Yeah. yeah. But it is accessible to anyone who's disabled, et cetera. Yeah. yeah. So um, it yeah. really can be utilized by anybody. Okay. For sure. And is it? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is. That's, yep. Yeah. Now, does that association, is that just about the handy van or is there, that is the Disabled Persons Association cover anything? It covers anything, but in Nipois, it's, um, it's, it's pretty much the handy van. But if okay. you're looking for um, like grants or okay. programs or whatever, like that's where it's, it's sort of more of a blanket for okay. the province. So there are right? other sort of avenues that, that mm -hmm. you, you guys work down. Yep. Yep. Everybody kind of helps out. Yeah. So it works out good. That's, that's, I, you know, I kind of, I obviously I knew it was here, but I never really knew, mm -hmm. you know, how it, how it all worked. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's good. And the county court building, I'm yeah. um, with Councillor Gerard at the county court building. And we've had quite a few meetings with that one too, because the county court building is needing some repairs. So yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I saw your report at the last council mm -hmm. meeting on that one. So yeah, I love that. Yeah. It's a beautiful building. It is. So, so is this just important. about the physical building or is it about the services the building provides? The services it provides, what it can be utilized for, um, trying to actually bring in uh, more services to okay. that building because you, you want it in use. Yeah. Right. Well, you, it, we all know a building that sits, sits. It, it, yeah. it needs to be utilized. So is that so. building owned by the town? Or? I have. I can't answer that one. Okay. <laughs> I cannot answer that one. Yeah, that one I don't know. I know that the, the people who serve on the committee are not just from Nipua. You have Oh, no, they're from, all municipalities. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From the different municipalities. I know, I know Rosedale has their offices in that mm -hmm. building. And there's, what else is in there? There's the Quilters Group has their, they meet there okay. um, once a week. And the Genealogy Group meets in there. We had a renter, actually, um, um, I would say an artist, yeah, uh, to sum it all up, uh, <laughs> renting. But actually, they are they are moving. Okay, I, I believe to Ontario, so we'll be okay. losing so them. Moving, as moving, a, yeah, moving, yeah. moving. <laughs> yeah, but it's a beautiful building. It just needs accessibility. That has always, I think, been an issue with that building, yep. mm -hmm. because the uh, the actual courthouse is on the second floor. That's right. Yes. So, is there any developments in that area? Are we, we are looking of, into that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Now there is. I think on the back side of the building, there is a, like a lift of some yes, sort. Yes, there is. Does that work? Um, I believe the lift does work. I'm going to say yes. But, but I think that's just the still, main floor, right? It's just to main floor. Just it's to still, main floor. it's just yeah. to get you into the building. Yeah. But that's not considered accessible. No, no. Because we can't when... utilize yeah. the entire building. Now, if somebody only wanted the main floor, that would be fine. But it, yeah. it's still not an accessible building. Right. And it is actually a very beautiful building. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's got lots building. of... It's character. I remember when there was, I think, a lot more offices. I guess the Chamber of Commerce is in there yeah. as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they, they were mm -hmm. in use at one time. So it would be nice to see... It'd be nice to it see... Bustling it with used. activity yeah. again. But I think the accessibility issue, and I guess that is, again, part of your passion project there is, is mm -hmm. getting accessibility. It's getting it accessible so we can utilize it for more. Yeah. Yeah. So, which I think probably also plays into the other one, which is you are on the um, uh, public works and infrastructure. Mm -hmm. What is your role there? <laughs> <laughs> well, that one, I, I can say I'm a co-chair. Uh, I, that's a really tough one. Yeah. Because public works and infrastructure, I'm, I'm learning as I go. Yeah. There's, there's so much involved in that one. A lot involved in that one but I'm very okay. excited to see the amount of growth that's yeah. happening and the development that's happening and you know that's fantastic that's amazing I mean, yeah it's great to see because you know 10 years ago mm -hmm. we were um, a shrinking town really I mean mm -hmm. maybe 15 years ago we right. were a shrinking town and mm -hmm. we have really reversed that and probably nearly I wouldn't say doubled in size but it's, we're getting there we're getting there Pretty that was always, that. you know, that was a big concern I've heard from a lot of people yeah. in the past three years as a counselor is, yeah. um, you know, we have a lot of people moving into town. There's our communities growing and growing and growing. But what about housing? Yeah. We need housing. 
You know, that was a big issue when I first got on council is, mm -hmm. what are we doing about the housing issue? And I think it's quite clear what we're doing about the housing issue. It's, I yeah, mean, mushrooms. There's, there's, <laughs> a lot, there's a lot of development happening yeah. and hopefully that will kind of start to reduce people's yeah. concerns about... Um, and I think some, and correct me if I'm wrong here, I think we, between the different housing projects that are happening, there is affordable housing going in and there's higher end housing going in mm -hmm. in various, is that correct? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, there are some apartments yeah. um, being constructed, different type of, um, what you would say, like a um, townhouse condo type. Right, yeah. Um, and then housing. So I think you're kind of hitting every range yeah. to help. Because a lot of the, the people in, in the growth of the town are young families. Yes. I would say. Yeah. Um, yeah. Both through immigration and through, uh, we have an increased birth rate now. We have lots oh, of yes. children being Absolutely. born in town. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe so, I need I to mean... get one of the doctors in town in here to talk about that. <laughs> because that's... Exactly. There you go. <laughs> Um, so that is sort of an interesting topic. And I brought this up with everyone who's sort of come and sat with me, is that um, the makeup of the council, um, how well do you think it reflects the makeup of the town, given that a lot of the adult population of the town can't run and can't vote? Hmm. That's an interesting question. I really yeah. do think as a council yeah. as a whole, yeah. um, we are all very open to yeah. the people's concerns, what they have to say to us. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I don't really see it as being anything yeah. that's not representative. I think, yeah. we, I think yeah. our council as a whole, yeah. our administration staff is very representative of yeah. what this community is. Yeah. yeah. So um, what avenues do people have who are in that position, who you know are interested in what's happening in the town, they're raising their families here. Um, mm -hmm. What avenues do, would you recommend they, they use to get their any of their concerns known or anything like that? Go to the town office. Yeah. They are very approachable. Yeah. Any issue, that's what I would say. Yeah. Or approach a counselor. Yeah. You know, if you've nice. got, you know, if you have Most issues, you are nice. we're, we're all very open to take. <laughs> Yeah. And like I said, we're human beings. We yeah. have, <laughs> you know, we have cares and concerns as well. Yeah. And like I said before, some of the issues that are brought forth to a lot of us are issues that, yes, we can bring forth, but it, uh, you know, sometimes it's not something that's necessarily a quick fix or something that you can actually help them with, but you yeah. certainly can do your best for, yeah. for them. And that's, that's what we do. That's what we try to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not. It's not always easy. As we say, it's not always it's easy. It's not to, always easy. So, what? Um, how much of what you do in the council is really long-term planning, as opposed to those quick fixes? That a lot of it. Yeah, yeah, a lot of it. You have to have insight to look ahead five yeah. years, ten years, two years. Mm -hmm. Nothing yeah. happens overnight. Yeah. <laughs> It's, there's a process to everything, and that's the one thing I have learned, is there is a definite process uh -huh. to get what you want to accomplish. It doesn't just happen. There's a lot of steps to get there, um, and that takes time, but you have to look ahead. You, you have to plan ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So where do you see this town in five, ten years? I see it definitely uh, growing. Yeah. Yeah, I see more industry coming to this town, I hope. That's a big hope. Yeah. yeah. I see it growing. Nipwa is growing. It is yeah. a huge hub. Mm -hmm. It's a rural hub, and it's going to continue to grow. Mm -hmm. one, of, one of the things in town is we do have one major industry here. Like we have High Life. Right. Yes. And that is a major employer major. in town. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you see as um, something... Um, we can do, or what do you see as a potential for bringing in those other big industries, those secondary industries, because we have the workforce here? Mm -hmm. uh, from a counselor's perspective uh, and public works, I can tell you that it's infrastructure. Yeah. Yeah. That is our limiting factor it's right like now. It's like that famous saying, if you build it, they will come. But yeah. if you don't have it, then you can't even entice somebody. Yeah. If you don't have the infrastructure to support industry, then you can never have industry. Yeah. So that's what I mean by looking ahead. So, 
And those are the things I think we're putting in place with the mm -hmm. water treatment plant, yes. with the lagoon, with things yes. like that. Yeah. So that is really looking ahead to try and get these industries in here. Mm -hmm. um, do you, do you possibly foresee a snowball effect with the uh, population and industry feeding on each other going into the future? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You bring industry, you bring people. Yeah. Population increases. Jobs increase. Yeah. Town increases. Housing increases. So one day maybe city of Nipua? <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that, but... <laughs> I think it was, it was, it was. What weird. is the number for a city now? I know, I, I think I was talking about the, the, like, the number for a city. Is. What is the number for a city? Yeah, I can't remember I don't know the if number for a specific city. number, but. I think it is kind of I a know, number. I know, they can do it in Winkler and Warden. We can do yeah. it here, right? Hey, never know. Never know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so you um, have owned your own business, you said, for mm -hmm. how many years? 28? 26, 26 years. 26 years? So, mm -hmm. what, how much do you think that has helped you as a counselor having that business background? A lot. Yeah. yeah, definitely. A lot. There's ups and downs with businesses and you've got to, as a business person, um, you know, you have to do a lot of listening to mm -hmm. a lot of people and, and take their concerns into consideration, which is just what we're doing as counselors. Yeah, yeah. it definitely has helped me. I also really like it because I have a, I see a lot of people and yeah. they talk to me. So I hear a lot of insights about what people actually are saying and wanting and, yeah. and their and interests, their specific concerns. specific to your business Yeah, in that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, it does help. And you are working full-time, oh, self-employed. Yeah. Yeah. What is your time commitment to council? Like we see, you know, an hour of a council meeting mm -hmm. uh, twice a month. What is your, your time commitment beyond that? It's, I mean, it's definitely a time commitment when you're on three other committees. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and you have, you know, people voicing their concerns, calling you, texting, stopping in, you know. So there is a definite time outside of your work. Um, but this was timing for me to run for council as well. Both of my children are grown and moved away. And right. um, so now I have a little more free time. <laughs> I think we see that a lot on council is people, especially yeah. when their children have left. Yeah. Because you, you do have to have the, you do yeah. have to have time to, you know, be on committees and, and be at council meetings yeah. and go to, you know, different seminars that you might need to go yeah. to or workshops and, and you need to have the time to do that. Does it leave a lot of time for you for any other activities in your life? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Work, I, counsel, and sleep. <laughs> and sleep. <laughs> no, uh, COVID was tough. I mean, you couldn't really do a whole lot of other things. True. That's why, I'm, I mean, the bike park is an amazing addition to Nipah, I think, for recreation. Mm -hmm. I think our pool that we're, you know, the whole pool the upgrade, Riverbend, the new plan, and, it's yep. amazing. So, yeah, everybody makes time for recreation and free time. Everybody, yeah. I, I hope everyone does. They should anyway. They should try. They should, they try. should really try. Yes. It's worth but it. Sleeping is not recreation, although no. I do enjoy it a great deal. I do enjoy that as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I want to, one last thing that I want to ask you is, is just, you know, if there's one thing you want people to understand about serving on council, what would that be? Oh. That's a tough, that one could go on forever. <laughs> it's actually, it's quite rewarding, yeah. but it's also, it's also quite demanding in the sense of you're making some decisions yeah. for people. Like, and so sometimes that's hard because it might not be the decision they think is right. And then the next time you get praised for, wow, you guys did such a great job. So it's yeah. a it's a balancing act, and yeah. you really. But I am enjoying it. I'm learning a lot more um, as I go. There's so much to learn, <laughs> but uh, thank God for a really good um, administration staff who Indeed. help us out <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Well, that's great. Thank you so much for joining thank me you. today. Thank you for your time. Yes. Thank you. <laughs>